That was incredible. I cannot believe we got such good looks at that bird. And all of my adrenaline just made me super awake. So I feel like driving again. Rob, you can't tell, but he's excited too, probably. In mid-May, a western bird species that is an extremely rare visitor to our state made an appearance, the mountain bluebird. Not only are mountain bluebirds rarely found in Wisconsin, but if they are, they almost never stay longer than a day. When a female was reported for multiple days in a row, we knew we had to make the trip up north to the Schwamigan National Forest to see it. We left well before sunrise to make the nearly five-hour drive, picking up our friend and extremely talented birder Rob on the way. To give ourselves a little extra luck, we decked ourselves out in the bird's natural color. So I'm texting Rob and telling him to wear blue, because we both wore blue in honor of chasing the mountain bluebird. I just said, hey, wear blue if you have it. The little guy. Did you give him a reason or no? Nope, no reason. Okay, we'll see what happens. With the sun finally up, we got to Rob's house and geared up for our search. How's it going? Good, how are you? We Let's... gonna net a mountain bluebird? Yeah, something like that. In case we see some dragonflies. It's pretty green up here. It sure is. It looks like there's a tunnel that leads to the open light. We are 49 minutes away from the spot that this bird was seen. And I'm very sleepy already. And it's been checking out these bird houses with an eastern bluebird. Probably when we get to clearing, we should be able to just see them on the right side, I would think. There's some. I mean, it, oh, well, there's some on the right, right there. We noticed some nest boxes that appeared to be taken by tree swallows, as well as a male eastern bluebird on one of the power lines. Eastern bluebirds are found in Central and Eastern North America and are most often spotted around agricultural fields or other open areas near forests. Males are royal blue on the head and back with an auburn orange stomach. Females have a similar color pattern, but the blues and oranges are duller. During the spring, the male Eastern bluebird will display at the entrance of a nest cavity in a fairly elaborate courtship that involves bringing nest material to the cavity entering and exiting the cavity, and waving his wings from a perch above the cavity. After courtship, the female builds the nest and incubates the eggs. Eastern bluebirds feed mostly on insects and fruits, but sometimes go after mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. As we took a closer look, we noticed many boxes lining both sides of the road. Looks like the nest boxes are probably over this way, but they're kind of a distance of ways actually. With a lot of nest boxes and a lot of spaces to look over, it seemed like it could be quite the task to get a glimpse of this bird if it was even still in the area. We saw plenty of great catbirds and tree swallows as we scanned the fields, but then Rob spotted something in the bushes near the road. We got it right by the road. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, it was, uh, Rob just pointed it out. He was like, oh, there it is. It was right in the tree. Yeah, well, let's see where it goes. We're waiting to see if the bluebird is going to make another appearance because it kind of disappeared and we lost track of it. We're hoping it'll come a little closer so we can get some more views. Got a nice raven though. Yeah, we got a raven though. Got some other migrants getting to go bunting we found. Um, there's a lot of activity out here. The sun is trying to come out, I think, a little bit. Blue skies out there. It won't have strayed too far from here if it's nesting. With the mountain bluebird out of sight for the time being, we headed to Pershing Wildlife Area to look around. Pershing Wildlife Area encompasses around 7,900 acres of land in Taylor County. It is composed of two units that in total contain over 1,000 acres of wetland that includes 15 flowages, 
as well as around 3,000 acres of managed bush prairie and about 3,000 acres of hardwood forest. At Pershing, we saw several new species for the day, including trumpeter swan, clay-colored sparrow, and blue-winged teal. We also had a run-in with a rare variety of a common mammal. That's crazy. It's the second one I've seen in the last week. Really? Mm -hmm. After spending some time at Pershing, we returned to the mountain bluebird spot to see if we could find it again. The male eastern bluebird was standing guard nearby one of the nest boxes. We watched as it made its way over and landed. Then we witnessed something amazing. Courtship behavior between the male eastern bluebird and the female mountain bluebird. There she is. There was definitely some courtship feeding. What do you think? That's awesome. Definitely looks like they're a couple. The male did feed the female at least one worm, it looked like, so. You could say it's pretty serious. It's definitely a good indicator of courtship. We watched the mountain bluebird foraging near the nest box, putting on a nice show. The mountain bluebird is a brightly colored thrush that is native to western North America, often found in middle to high elevation areas. Males are sky blue, with slightly darker blue on the wings and tail, and a light underside. Females and immature birds are normally gray-brown and white, with pale blue on the wings and tail. Both males and females have a black bill and appear lanky. The diet of the mountain bluebird consists mostly of insects, and when feeding, the birds are likely to hover over their prey before catching it or swooping down on it from a perch. Mountain bluebirds often nest near the edges of forests, in nest boxes, and compete fiercely with other species for the best boxes. After the eggs hatch, the male mountain bluebird will frequently bring food to the female, and the female will sometimes beg for food along with the fledglings. Mountain bluebirds have been known to occasionally hybridize with both eastern and western bluebirds and can produce fertile offspring. The most common hybrids occur between mountain and eastern bluebirds because the two species are genetically the closest to each other. The interactions we witness between the male eastern bluebird and female mountain bluebird are likely the first recorded occurrences of breeding behavior between the two species in Wisconsin. That was incredible. I cannot believe we got such good looks at that bird. And all of my adrenaline just made me super awake. So I feel like driving again. Rob, you can't tell, but he's excited too, probably. Was it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> was it worth risking the tick infestation? So far, no ticks, so good, good, good. We went looking for the mountain bluebird wanting just to see it. What we ended up witnessing was so much more, making the long drive completely worth it. Hopefully our sighting, along with similar sightings by other birders, will help paint a clearer picture of what this potential hybridization means for this species in our state. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. It really depends on if we see the bird or not, whether it's worth it. Because if you do this and you don't see the bird, then you're just like, why did I do this myself? But if you do see it, you're like, this was a great story. I can't wait to do it again. You never know with this guy. <laughs> Should have made two sandwiches. Hopefully pick up another ruft. Rouse it up. I was admiring this tree fence. That's just like a row of trees. It's kind of trippy looking. Tree fence. Get jacked. <laughs> <laughs>